Hey everyone, welcome to another review. Today we are going to look at the Fabrano Studio Watercolor Paper. The cotton content in this paper is 25%. Fabrano is a well-known company from Italy that makes high-quality watercolor paper. I'm a big fan of their Fabrano Artistico Watercolor Paper, which is 100% cotton. So the paper we are looking at today is the Studio Watercolor Paper and this has only 25% cotton. Now the paper texture here is hot press. I'll be comparing this hot press paper versus the cold press paper that I've been using all along before I bought this pad. The paper weight is 300 GSM. This paper is available in 200 as well as 300 GSM. This is the size 9 by 12 inches. This paper is available in different sizes. Acid free eco-friendly, made in Italy. Most of the tutorials I've made on YouTube feature cold press paper, but I'm actually a fan of hot press paper as well. I bought this in Singapore and it is 8.5 Singapore dollars, which is around US $6.2. Compared to 100% cotton paper, this is about half the price. So I would consider this to be in the mid range in terms of affordability. Before we use the Fabriano Studio paper, let me show you what I'm trying to achieve. So this is Archer's 100% cotton paper. I'm going to try and blend one color to the other and see if the transition between the two colors, if they are very soft. And here I have a wash where I painted some horizontal lines. I want to see if the colors can actually blend softly into the wet wash. And lastly, we'll see if the color can blend into the white of the paper using wet on wet techniques. Basically all these are wet on wet techniques. So for the first test, to make it a bit neater, I'm going to draw a square here. I'm going to paint the top with ultramarine and the bottom with crinocrite or magenta and see how the colors, how they blend. But first, I'm going to wet this box. This is sufficiently wet, so let me just paint ultramarine at the top. Let's see how the colors, how they flow down. On the other side, I'm going to paint Quinacridone Magenta. So let me turn this upside down. And this is Quinacridone Magenta. The wash is still wet. So let's see if the colors, they can blend softly together. And from what I can see the color, it's not moving that much. So let me just paint into the ultramarine. I'm tilting the paper to let the colors flow down. But it doesn't seem to move much. For the second test, I'm going to paint a wash of ultramarine here. So while the wash is still wet, I'm going to paint some horizontal lines with quinacridone magenta. You can see the colors, they are not moving that much even though the paper is very wet. I can see the color is starting to move but it's very slowly, it just keeps to its place. And lastly, we'll see if the paint can blend into the white of the paper. So earlier you had a glimpse of that with this first demo. So now I'm going to paint ultramarine here with a lot of paint and see how far it will move. I'm tilting the paper. The colors are not dry yet, but I don't think they will move anymore. So let's compare the Fabriano Studio 25% cotton paper versus the Archer's 100% cotton paper. So here I try to blend one color to the other and the transition, this is not very soft. It's not like this. Even though the surface was wet, the colors, they don't move much. Here you can see the transition, it's so obviously smoother and more gradual. Now with this, the surface was wet. I painted several horizontal lines and the colors, they were not able to diffuse softly into the ultramarine. And here I did the same thing, but you can see the colors, they just diffuse so softly, so beautifully into the color. And here again, the colors, they don't move that much. You can see with the archers, the transition here, it's so soft. But here it's quite abrupt. 
So what does this mean? This means that it's going to be quite challenging to blend colors and achieve that soft gradual transition. It's going to be challenging to charge in a color into a wet wash and have that color diffuse softly. The 300 GSM paper is able to handle wet washes without buckling significantly, so that's quite good. Okay, let's draw something with pencil, pen, and maybe color pencil. Hot press paper is so smooth. I really love drawing on hot press paper. And compared to cold press, you don't really see the rough texture. So this is great for those uh, fine illustrations. For cold press paper, I think when people look at the texture, it, they immediately would associate it with watercolor medium. For hot press paper, it's more suitable for other types of drawing medium. You can paint as well as draw on it. And now let's switch over to using pen. With pen and ink, you can get really sharp lines. When drawing on cold press paper, sometimes the paper may actually move your pen tip slightly because of the texture of the paper. Some parts of the paper is actually lower, some part is higher. And when you're drawing from low to high on the paper, Sometimes it moves your pen slightly. With hot press, you don't have that sort of problem. This paper is able to handle watercolor quite well, just that for wet on wet techniques, it's not that good. And the colors, they still appear quite vibrant on the paper, which is great. I accidentally ran my finger over the wet ink. The ink is noodleless bulletproof black ink which dries really slowly. I think I'm going to switch over to using some other ink that dries a bit faster. This is Ceridium Blue Chromium. I'm going to try and blend this color with Queen Magenta again. Dab some Queen Magenta into the wash. Some ultramarine with burnt sienna. While waiting for the watercolor to dry, we'll try some color pencil on the paper. Now this paper, I think it's great for color pencil work. The paper is quite smooth. Adding additional layers of colors may be challenging. So let me add another color to this and see whether or not the paper can grab onto the color pencil. I think that's fine. So two layers is all right. And this is the type of texture you can get on hot press paper. Let's try the third layer. So it seems that the paper can still grab onto the color pencil. So three layers of pencil is fine, it seems, on this hot press paper. The watercolor has dried, so let's take a closer look. I like the graphite lines. I actually love to draw with pencil on this hot press paper. And because this paper is not as rough compared to cold press, your graphite pencil, it doesn't require sharpening as often. These are the color blends. The colors are not going to move that much, so you have to note the limitation when you are painting with watercolor. But for sketches like this, I think it's perfectly fine, where you just go over with one wash and maybe charging some colors occasionally, it's fine. But if you are doing a lot of wet on wet techniques, then this is definitely not the suitable paper colors they are quite vibrant on this paper so this paper is actually quite good to test out color mixes it doesn't dull down the color so the colors the true colors actually still show through pen and ink is fantastic you can get really sharp lines if you're someone who loves to draw details this is a suitable paper for you I believe some artists they do use hot press watercolor paper for their color pencil artwork 
So this is three layers of pencil and it can cover the white of the paper quite well. And now let's compare the hot press version of Fabrano Studio versus its cold press version. So this is the Cerulean Blue Chromium, the color that I used earlier for this paper. So the texture looks quite different. You can tell straight away that this is rougher paper. This is still very beautiful. I would say that this is something like, you know, those marbles where they have very polished, smooth surface, but beneath it, you can see those beautiful colors. This is something like that. This is much rougher. And this is how the color blend looks like. You can see the texture here. You don't see as much. Here's a sketch that I drew with pen and ink and painted over with watercolor. This is on the cold press Fabrano Studio paper. So you can certainly get some color transition here. But I do recommend that you test out your color mixes before you paint them on the paper because you may not get the effect that you want because this paper it behaves differently compared to 100% cotton paper. And when you compare sketches or paintings done on cold press paper versus hot press paper, you will get the feeling that this is more like a watercolor painting. But on hot press paper, this is more like fine art illustration. The paper can handle some glazing too. So this is one layer of lemon yellow over ultramarine. Because the paper is so smooth, I doubt it can handle too many layers of watercolor. Anyway, you shouldn't have so many layers on your painting. But the good thing about this paper is this has 25% cotton, so this is more durable compared to those wood pulp or cellulose paper. When you are glazing several layers, the paper fiber should still be intact and shouldn't come off the surface. So that's one advantage of cotton paper, durability. Here's another sketch on the cold press paper. I just want to draw your attention to the pencil lines. The edges of pencil lines on cold press paper, it's slightly rougher compared to hot press paper. So this is hot press. And this is cold press. Very subtle difference. All right, let me sum up this review by giving you the pros and cons of this paper. I like this because there is 25% cotton content, which makes the paper more durable compared to wood pulp paper. So when it comes to glazing multiple layers of watercolor, the paper surface will not give way, the fibers, they will not come off the surface. So that is one good point. The other thing is the paper is quite white and it reflects the colors quite well so when you're painting watercolor on it the colors they will come back very vibrant which is great with some lousier watercolor paper it actually dulls down the color but not for this this paper is actually a paper that i use for most of my limited color palette videos i use this paper to uh, paint color swatches because the colors they reproduce really well and this is available in 300 and 200 gsm so if you want to get cheaper paper than 200 gsm this is actually 200 gsm but this is 300 gsm things i do not like well it's very challenging to use wet on wet techniques on this paper even though it has cotton content so the performance of this paper is actually no different con the performance of this paper is actually no different compared to other cellulose or wood pulp paper. So that's the only downside I can think of. By the way, this sketchbook is not available for sale to the public because this is a customized sketchbook. I got uh, SPD to bind this sketchbook with Fabrano Studio paper. So that's all for my review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to check out some of the artworks that I have drawn or painted on Fabrano Studio, you can check out the link in the video description below. I have some scans for you. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is informative. See you in the next one. Bye.